really um, excited about what we're talking about tonight because um, I'm learning. Amen. I don't got it all figured out yet. And this topic is something that's very, very important. And we're about to we're about to address the elephant in the room. Amen. As Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 through 14, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press towards the mark of the prize of the higher calling. He says, I don't know everything, amen, but I know one thing. When it comes to money, finances, and overcoming, you got to press forward wherever you're at, amen? Amen. Amen. God is good. I invite you to, everybody have their study guides? Amen. All right. We all face tough and difficult challenges in life. Some challenges are more difficult to overcome, especially when the odds are stacked against us. Going against all odds is something God says we are well equipped to do. Challenges are part of everyday life. They make us stronger, and without them, life becomes somewhat meaningless because we have nothing to compare our good times to. In order to overcome challenges, we need to have that I can do all things through Christ attitude. If we adopt this mindset, we'll overcome many of our challenges. This month, we will identify and learn some practical ways to overcome spiritual, financial, emotional, and health challenges. We believe that every follower of Jesus Christ should embrace and hold firm to every aspect of these lessons in order to overcome life's challenges. And today we're going to be talking about overcoming financial challenges. Amen? Amen. Um, the scripture I would like us to read first is Matthew chapter 19, verse 20 through 24. Amen. All right. So to give you a little context, of course, there's a rich man. He comes and talk to Je he's talking to Jesus, and he says, you know, what do I have to do? You know, I have to make it to heaven. And he said, you know, have you kept the commandments, this and that? And this guy's like, I I've done all of that. I'm, I'm good. Check. I don't steal. I don't kill. I don't hurt people. Check. He's like, I'm a good guy. And then this is where we're at right now, Jesus says. The guy says, I've obeyed all these commandments, the young man replied. What else must I do? What else can I do? Jesus told him, if you want to be perfect, go and sell all your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. But when the young man heard this, the young rich man, he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Now, I'm not going to talk about how having money is bad. It's not. <laughs> But when it causes you to say no to God, then we have a problem. Then Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you the truth. It is very hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. I'll say it again. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter into the kingdom of God. So what we're seeing in life, you can say, you know what? Hey, God, what's, what's going on? Let me give a, a survey of my life. What's going on? All right, your kids are in order, your marriage is in order, check. Um, you're waking up every day, you're happy, you're being a witness, check. He's like, hold up, sell everything and follow me. Uh-oh, that's where he's at. So this is the context for that. Another scripture, Matthew chapter 6, verse 26 through 34. And this is another context, Jesus speaking to the multitudes, teaching them. And there's a lot of other scriptures before that, but I can't write a whole page of scriptures. I know people will get lost, so I cut them off a little. Um, but starting at verse 26, look at the birds. Jesus is trying to teach us about not worrying about money and that God will take care of us. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? 
And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon, all of his splendor, was dressed like one of these. If that is how God cloth the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? You of little faith. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things, all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Amen? So this isn't saying don't care about money, don't care about um, taking care of business and things like that. But the ideal of at the end of the day, God's going to be the one that takes care of you. So you have that balance. You have one aspect where you work so hard, you got all this money. And then you're saying, well, God, there's certain things I just won't do because I want my money. And you, you know, love money more than God. Okay, that's a problem. Then the other side is, you know what? Man, you just worry so much about trying to do what's right and trying to get all this stuff together that... You don't have any peace, and it's like, where's your faith? So God's trying to get us to a place where they say, in order to overcome financial struggles, just trust me and allow me to be God, and you seek me first, and I'm going to take care of you. So today, we're going to be talking about overcoming financial challenges. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you, Father. Because you are the Father, hallelujah, where every good and every perfect gift comes from. You are, Lord God, our provider. You are our way maker. You are everything that we need. And Lord, strip me out of the flesh because I'm just a man, Lord. But Lord God, I thank you for helping me to be an overcoming man because of that spirit, that Holy Ghost, Lord, that witness on the inside. I pray that you would use this piece of clay, Lord God, to speak into lives today, not just to speak a speech or something intellectual words but allow it to be an importation lord allow a word of prophecy to go forth lord a prophetic word into someone's spirit into someone's life today lord someone facing real challenges lord god and it can't be covered up by a prayer it cannot be covered up by going through the motions but understanding who you are lord god and receiving your word and we pray today for peace and for joy in the name of jesus we pray amen hallelujah there's something about money that if you don't got it, how many of you guys, you've been in situations where it seems like you don't got no money, it's like, where's my joy? It could just snatch the joy right out of you. You mean like I'm broke, right? Money will do that. Money will take your peace away. You say, I thought I had it all together, and I had some problems with some money, and I just almost lost my mind. Who knows what I'm talking about? So what we're going to be talking about today is so real, amen, so real. And the other scripture that I want to mention um, outside of this context, because sometimes we look at scriptures that, you know, we're talking about money, but then if you just think about God's character and him taking care of us, you got to look at it in the context of whatever your situation is. So when a scripture says in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, and we know that all things work together for the good for them that love God. To them who are called according to his purpose. No matter what financial stress, no matter what pain, no matter what situations that you're, that's overwhelming you, just think all things work together for the good. God's like, I got you. I'm going to take care of you. Amen? And I did just for a little extra little things there. I like to put pictures up. We just got back from India. So I have some of the pictures there. Amen? You can't see it that good, but we'll be talking more about that on, on Sunday. Um, brother, if you can come up, I want to give you an example here. We're going to do a small skit. We have a man, he's praying at the altar. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord God, my, my PG&E needs to be paid, my my. My, my water bill needs to be paid, God. I ain't got no, no gas in my car, God. I just need, I need a financial blessing, God. I'm, I'm stressing my job. I don't pay enough, God. And I'm catching the bus, God. At times I ain't got no gas. And it's just a stressful situation. My wife wants things. My kids need things. And I can't even give them the things that they need, God. Help me, God. Teach me, God. I feel less of a man, God. I don't 
kind of overheard you kind of going through something. You've been really interceding, and I notice you're just really trying to touch the Lord, and I just want to know, is there anything that I can do to help you? Help me pray for my finances, man. <laughs> you mean it's not like problem with your marriage or problem with the kids or, or like, you know, you got some sickness or something? Just pray for your, your finances? Pray for my finances. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I'm going to be real with you. I'm going to keep it 100 with you because I'm one of the real ones, you know. I keep it real. Who knows what I'm talking about? Are you a real one? I got any real ones here? You know, so I'm just going to tell you. This is what you need to do. First of all, you got to block all the bill collectors so they can't talk to you. If they can't talk to you, they can't get no money. You ain't got to stress. Put a block on their number, okay? Also, what you need to do is you need to just run. Just run from everything. Ignore it. Put silence. I mean, you need to quit your job. Let the house go. Let the car go. Brother, just, just, just check out and live on the streets and you don't got to worry about nothing. I said pray for finances. I ain't say lose my mind. I'm crying out to the Lord because I trust that he's going to provide my needs. And I walk by faith and not by sight, but as the weight of a man, it's hard sometimes. What are you talking about? You need prayer. <laughs> you get it, man. I was testing you. You passed the test, man. I was just testing you. I wanted to know because I've been there too, man. You passed the test. God took me through some stuff. And I just want to let you know that you can do all things through Christ. And you know what? We don't got to run from our problems, man. I got your back. I'm going to pray with you too. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Give me a hand, you guys. <laughs> How many of us, sometimes when you're going through financial troubles, you do feel like running? Right? Like Forrest Gump. Like, I just started running. <laughs> They'd be like, can I'm here to talk to? Running. <laughs> can I talk to so-and-so? Is this morning girl? I'm like, running. <laughs> you just feel like running from it, right? But God created us to be overcomers, amen, to face the challenges, but not by ourselves. But he says that I will not leave you as orphans. I'm going to be with you. I'm your father. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to give you grace, and I'm going to give you faith, and I'm going to inspire you to overcome these financial challenges. Now, when we think about challenges, financial challenges, let's break it down. Not enough money, too many bills, high debt, whew, I know that one. <laughs> no written budget, unexpected expenses, loss of income, overspending, bad credit, no credit, poor credit, unemployment, fear of losing houses, cars, and just things, not able to be Faithful to give to others, not faithfully being able to give to others, not able to save money, not prepared for financial emergencies, stress of not being able to meet all your basic needs, not being able to get what you want. The struggle with financial um, problems is real. Can I get amen? Amen. It's real. So what we're going to talk about today, it's real and it hits everybody. Everybody, and we can't run from it. So first, I want to go through and go through some questions because I'm in none of those preach-teach moments, and I could just go off, but I'm going to, like, slow down for a moment. So number one, do you sometimes feel handicapped when it comes to managing your money? Who would like to talk about that? Yes, and who would like to? Go ahead. Hike. Who's ready? Boom, and then boom. Yeah, sometimes I feel handicapped because it's like sometimes you have more bills than money, and you're trying to budget and trying to find out what can you cut and what you can't cut, and sometimes you, you make certain mistakes, thought that you, you had it all together, but you, then you didn't. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. I don't um, feel handicapped, and I can honestly say that because I have come from nothing to where I am today, and that's because of prayer, faithfulness to my tithe and offering. And when you're faithful, even with little, he is, you are, he's faithful to you even in the greater. And no, I don't. I don't feel handicapped. That's good. 
It's always good to see another perspective as well. We're going to be talking about that. You're getting into my message there, sister. You're doing what pastor was doing at one time. <laughs> Somebody else. Do you sometimes feel handicapped? Because we're going to talk about weaknesses. Sometime in church, we can put on really good fronts like we got it all together. But I can tell you, I don't got it all together. I've had a lot of money over my years, probably made about a million dollars over the years. But I'm still struggling at times. So I want to be real with you. So anybody feel some handicaps, somebody in those situations where cause we got to overcome stuff. And over to overcome, there's got to be some weight or some conflict. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. Sometimes um, I had a lot of credit card debt, and I'm like, I'm going to pay this off. I'm going to get aggressive, and then I see all my credit card bills, and I'm like, oh, man, I can't pay it all off. I'm getting better, though. Amen. Thank you for being honest. You know, sometimes the Bible talks about if you have faith to, 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 as a mustard seed, you can move a mountain. And we're all here at the altar. You're crying and praying. And all of us are thinking about different things. Somebody may be thinking about marriage and kids and stuff. But a lot of folks are sitting there like, God, I don't know how I'm going to pay this pg and &E. I don't know what's going to happen with this car. If they're going to repossess it. If they're going to take the house. Oh, I'll put my faith in you. Who knows what I'm talking about? Amen. There's those type of situations. One more. Praise the Lord. Sometimes we feel handicapped, just talking in general, because we spend more than what we have. We spend more than what's coming into our pockets. So uh, it's part of life, the lust of eyes, you know, things that we want and not we need. But we have to learn as a church to budget, you know, budget. So, amen. Amen. We're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about that later. Amen, amen, amen. Next question, next question. Awesome. Remember, some of you guys trying to steal the message. Hey, stay with me on the question. No, just playing. <laughs> Number two, in what ways might financial challenges stunt your growth or limit your dreams? Financial limitations stunt your growth or limit your dreams? This is the deep one. I got to get some new people. All right, here we go. when you um, feel that financial pressure, what happens is that uh, it can paralyze you. So you can no longer see ahead or even think because all you're looking is at the problem and you're paralyzed from that point on. Wow. Who's been paralyzed before? Where you feel like you just kind of go numb. Like, I don't know what to feel. I don't even want to feel the pressure or anything. I'm just like... You're just kind of like, you're stuck. You're like, what do you do? You can feel f like you freeze, right? Amen. How can, it, how can it limit your dreams or stunt your potential? Now, if we're saying you've got these great dreams and you're going to do all these great things, but you're like, man, but I don't got $5 for gas, right? <laughs> all right, somebody else, something on that. Yes. We all know that Jesus is our um, source, but the Bible also said money is the answer to all things. So if you don't have money, a lot of times you can't do things. So that handicaps you and that also paralyzes you. So you can't move or do this or that. Okay. And that's another feeling that you feel sometimes like, I'm just so stuck. But, it, but of course, which came first? Of course, we're getting to that later. But the chicken or the egg? The what? The chicken, right? Before you even get money, we know that we go out there and we work or something, right? And then afterwards, you get the money, right? It starts from within you. And we're going to get into all that later with faith and everything. Awesome, awesome. In what ways might financial challenges impact our ability to trust God? In what ways might financial challenges impact our ability to trust God? Sometimes we think of some big devil or something like that. But a lot of times you just be like, nope, you don't got no money. And you're like, man, how can I trust God? For those that have that type of background, you don't have a lot of money, and you, you begin to trust in yourself, and you start to hustle because you know that you can do it. You know, God, I don't think you can do it, but I can do it. So that's when pride comes in, and then you start getting worse and worse. Wow. Yes, yes, definitely. Definitely. You start saying, well, I got this, and I, since I can take care of myself, uh, why do I need to, yep, why do I have to trust God? I just, I just go, go to work. Go get some money. And the other people can go to church and pray about getting some money. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to work. You get it? Okay. Right here. You get to the point where you say, okay, God, prove yourself. Ooh, get to the place where you say, prove yourself. I'm going to trust you. And Malachi talks about that. Try him, test him, 
Next question. Is money good or bad? It could be either one. If the money is used as the way God wants us to use it, as to advance the kingdom, to help others, and not use it as a form of pride and say, look at me, I got all this, I can buy this and that, then, then when you're prideful about it, then it becomes bad. Because then you're do not doing what God has told you to do. Okay. Now, money um, itself, just the actual material, it's amoral. It's not good or bad. It's just a piece of, it's just a material. It's just a source. It's just a tool that people use. There's no guiding principles behind it. Now, what we turn into it, when you start getting into the lust of what you're going to do with it, and the scripture talks about the, the love of money is the root of all evil. If you just say, I love money, so get rich or die trying. I sell you some dope. I don't care. Get rich. Okay, that's a problem, right? Uh, if, you're, if, you're like, if you're the type where you take that material and that work and that piece and you use it to advance the kingdom, Okay, you're, you're giving people money to go on missions trips. You're getting stuff done for the church. You're, you're doing outreach. That's a good thing. So it's up to you what you do with it. But money itself is amoral. So that's a part of your, your notes right there. Amoral. Amen. My last question. What are some benefits of financial challenges? Now, of course, and I'm just... I'm driving you somewhere, so I'm not trying to give you everything yet because I'm going to start teaching you about it. We're just getting some questions going to get your mind going. What are some benefits of financial challenges? Because there are benefits. Um, some benefits of financial challenges, it teaches you to be grateful because God will put you in places of seasons. Because um, you can be at a place where you're financially balanced and you have the wisdom but God will take you through seasons where it'll be drought just to teach you principles and to get you prepared for another blessing and it teaches you to be grateful in the times when you have less or there's lack and it teaches you to trust God amen to be grateful and it teaches you to trust God amen benefits of financial struggle financial hardships I think it also can increase your pain threshold and increase your faith as well. You can go through it once, you can do it again. Wow. Pain threshold. We only grow according to the amount of threshold of pain we're able to take. And there's a book called Leadership Pain. And you think about stress and life and hardships. We will only grow in advance based off of how much hardship we can take. So if you only can handle one devil, then you can't get to the next level where you got four or five devils coming after you. So certain hardships that you had, like I remember me and my wife, we first got married, and it was, it was a blessing. It's all good. We went to Mexico for 20-something days. We were, like, living it up. Like, we're talking about a honeymoon. Like, what? You know, 28 days in Mexico. And it was awesome. And we loved it. And, uh, and it was a blessing. We got blessed and everything. And we came back, and something happened with our bank. My mortgage took out the mortgage twice. They made a mistake. I had no money. It was like I got back. It was like negative 1,000, 2,000 or something like that. It was crazy. And we just went straight to our knees and just start praying. Like, God, I just, we just got married. We've been over there spending money. And we get back and we don't have a lot. We, we, we're negative, right? Thousands, right? And all of a sudden, my brother pops up. Big brother. He says, bro, I just want to let you know I forgot to give you a gift for your wedding. And my wife and I, hair's 400, and it was like 400 and something. Oh, hallelujah! We were just like, thank you, Jesus. Amen. When God just, we were, because at first you're like, man, I mean, I know I'm in the will of God. I took my wife to Mexico. All this, God's got great plans. We're this ministry couple. We're going to do great things. And we get back, and it's like you start off your marriage with like $2,000 negative. No, you can't get nowhere. But God's like, don't worry, I got you. I'm going to take care of you. Don't worry. They just say, are we going to lose your house, Baba? Don't worry about all of that. You just pray and know you're with the right person and trust God. And he'll begin to just send little snacks of grace just to let you know I'm with you. And you can take the pain. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm going to transition um, really quickly because I know we don't got too much time. But some other things, depending upon God, sister mentioned that. Psalms 20 verse 7 talks about that. It's good that I have been a, Psalms 20 
verse 7. Let's do it. It's not like going to the scriptures. 20, verse 7. And this isn't in your handout. It's just it's under mine. Keep, it keeps us depending upon God. Psalm 20 and verse 7 reads, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Some of the greatest things is, you know, you, you, you're like, man, I didn't know how we did it. You know, but he did it. Amen. And you sing those songs, but he did it. Right? And you, how many of you guys, you had some financial situations where you didn't know how it happened. But somehow he did it. Amen. And I know it was like that on our trip. We, there were so many, they were just like, wow, how did, how did we end up here? God just really made a way. Amen. Also, it builds patience in our lives. Hebrew chapter 10. Hebrews 10 verse 36. So this is something you would have to write down. I didn't put it on there, but I just thought I would have that. Hebrews 10 verse 36, it states, for ye have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. Sometimes when you're going through things financially, God's just trying to teach us patience. And he's like, you're, you're in my will. It don't feel good right now. I understand. I get it. It's tough. But now apply that financially. Don't worry. Because after you've done my will, okay, you're going to receive the promise. You just got to trust me. And it, and it builds patience. And the scripture also talks about let patience have her perfect work. Amen. Because God's trying to cook us and get us ripe. Amen. We're not just people just talking with some fluff. But it takes time and a process and going through that pain threshold in order to build that, that patience. Amen. Also, it keeps us humble. Okay. First uh, Peter chapter 5, verse 6, it talks about to um, humble yourself under the almighty hand of God, and he shall exalt you in due time. It's something about when you're going through financial struggles and things, and you materially, sometimes because we're human, we want to see it right now. It doesn't matter if you got muscles to work or you got hours that you can go to work and work, and it's going to come in the future. We're like, right now, I don't see, you know that, that movie says, show me the money. We want to see the money. I need to see it right now. Let me feel you, God. You know, let me. And, and, and it's difficult. But in those moments, you just begin to humble yourself. And you're like, don't worry. God's going to lift you up. God's going to make it work out. He's going to exalt you. And, and, and it's humbling when you know you don't have enough. Even though you have the talent, you have the ability to work. But sometimes it's just our enough runs, it runs out. We do not have enough. And it humbles you because it says, God, fill in the gap. Amen. And it helps us to really learn to know the word of God. Psalm 119, verse 71. Psalm 119, verse 71. David says, it's good that I had been afflicted, that I might know thy statutes. When you go through something, how many of you guys have been through something and you, like the word of God just came alive? You were like, yep, it's real. Amen. And sometimes when, when you have everything going right and, and you're like, oh, I don't understand this whole suffering stuff. But the key message that we have, the greatest message is how to overcome pain, how to overcome struggle. That's what the world needs. You're not one of those churches that we try to ignore and we're some name it, claim it, people wish it and all this stuff. No, you're going to go through some pain, but understand there's grace and there's miracles and there's a God that's faithful who will not allow you to be tempted above which you're able, but he will with that temptation make a way of escape. But sometimes you're going to have to go through some suffering. Amen. And that's okay because it builds us. Also, Matthew 4, 4, Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but what? By every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Our great God, who is God manifest in the flesh, he actually came into this world. And where was he born? At the Hilton? At the Marriott? At the five star? Where was he born? In a what? In a manger. He went through suffering, but yet he humbled himself as a servant. He was the almighty God manifest in the flesh. He could have came just, well, just flying everywhere. Just, he's, he owns a cattle on a thousand hills. He owns the galaxy, but he chose to come as a humble servant. He chose to go through financial struggles. He moved from place to place, and he had to wander in his family, and they were going through it. But he was an overcomer. And he says um, that I, that we may be overcomers also. He said in this world, you're going to have challenges. You're going to have problems. But don't be afraid because I've overcome. You might overcome also. Hallelujah. Somebody shout Jesus. 
Hallelujah. And next, some other, one more. It helps us keep our priorities in order when we go through financial, um, some of the benefits. You look at Matthew 19, 20 through 24, and that's what we read at the beginning of our scripture. And the guy, the rich man who was like, you know what? Um, now, the thing is, you can have struggles financially and have money. Then what's the struggle? The struggle is I'm putting money before God. I'm putting my own works and my own abilities before God. I'm choosing not to share the wealth and the material that God has given me to help other people, right? Materially, but it'll, 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 it'll transfer into their spirits. Sometimes you give somebody something and all of a sudden they're just like, wow, I'm so grateful. And they were waiting and having patience and God used you to bless them. Amen. So, so the struggle is when we look at capitalism, I'm about to get deep now. I'm not trying to get too deep, but globalization and all this stuff, it's about greed. You start looking at stuff and you think the real bad person is the person out there selling drugs on the street. They are. But the ones that, I mean, that's bad. It's not good to do. But the real gangsters, okay, they got it published. They got the law behind them. They, they making trillions of dollars and it's in the stores. You know what I mean? They, they're right there. They got the commercials and everything. They're selling you some stuff. They're selling us some stuff. That's the real, the real, the real deal there when it comes to the priorities. They say, you know what? I don't need you to go to church. You go out there and you work and you get this Lexus. Sell out your family. Sell out your church. Sell your mama, your daddy. Do whatever. Man, just get this Lexus and you somebody. Does that make sense? Who cares about your values and stuff like that? Man, food, you can have three wives and this Lexus. You get it? So the real, the real, so it's not just sometimes we look at challenges financially and we just think about not having enough. But the other part is when you do have stuff, what do you do with it? And are you accountable for what you have? Because much is given, much is what? Required. Amen? Amen. Let's get personal. Now, growing up, we were in government assistance as a kid, myself and my family. Welfare for some years. Living, I lived in 14 different houses as a kid. We moved 14 times. One time I came home and there was a note on the door. It said, we moved to Tracy. Go to grandma's house. <laughs> One time I was running a race at, at a school event in Tracy, right? And then my, my family, I won a race. I didn't even get to pick up my trophy. They came and picked me up and said, we moved to stock to get in the car. <laughs> I never picked up that, tra that trophy. We were eating from the garbage can for about three years, from fourth grade to about sixth grade. Hustling money through paper routes, cutting grass, stealing, breaking into houses and stores, cashing in food stamps. I don't know if you know how I feel like to go to like about 10 different little liquor stores and take a $1 food stamp and buy, buy like 10 cent worth of stuff so you can get the change to give it to your, I don't know, anybody know what I'm talking about? The struggle is real. Writing false checks to pay for things as a kid. I used to steal my mother's checkbook and go pay for school pictures and all kind of stuff. Getting... Um, most of our clothes from the thrift store, um, never eating out at restaurants and watching my parents argue over money for most of my childhood. I have some experiences with financial challenges. The key is how you become an overcomer. God did not make us to be living in survival mode and afraid that the struggle being too real will eventually take us out. You see, I did not go through all of this as a kid not to know what it feels like to struggle. So sometimes you go through certain struggles, be like, oh, whoom, whoom, sad story. No, it creates a survivor. It creates a person that not only can survive stuff, when things get heavy and rough, you say, I didn't already been through so much, it can't even get worse. I'm not scared of the financial struggles. I was eating out the garbage can as a kid. So where they got me at right now, and I'm working these good jobs and all this stuff, it can just get better. Devil, don't come with me with all that fear of losing this and losing that. I grew up and all I knew was Kool-Aid. I knew about sugar water and rice and sugar and butter and top ramen. Who cares if I don't got no chicken for one night? You're a survivor. You'll become resilient because your level of pain, that threshold, you already know what it means to suffer. When somebody hit you a couple times and you was growing up getting hit and beat up, you're like, hold up. That don't hurt. Devil, you got to come with more than that. I'm a survivor. I'm a conqueror. And you start getting this word of God inside of you, building you up, and say, I've already went through so much, it can just get better. I'm an overcomer. The key 
is what does it feel like to be an overcomer? That's what we need. Jesus did not shed his blood at the cross for us only to know what it feels like to hurt and experience challenges. When you think of the blood, there is power. Power. Wonder working power in the blood. When you think about your finances and your struggles, you go to the blood. Don't just feel the pain and be discouraged and say somebody understands that I'm hurting. You say, but there's power to overcome. I can do all things through Christ. Greater is he that is within me. You use that power to rise up and to break the statistics, break the poverty line, break the cycle of poverty. I can do all things through Christ. That gives me strength. The word of God is here to build our faith and to give us power over financial challenges, just like every other area of our lives. Many of us will allow God to be Lord over sickness and over relationship problems. We even get about, we even get it about living a purpose-driven life and believing that we have a destiny before we were born. But somehow the enemy sneaks in and he lies and he tries to steal and to kill and to destroy God's people through challenges that we face in our finances. People are walking around there clapping. We're looking free. But deep down in your mind, when you go back out, you're saying, God, what am I going to do with these bills? I don't know if I'm going to make it. Am I going to be able to take care of my family? You just got to apply the blood. Right now, I want you to just begin to close your eyes right now. Somebody's dealing with some stuff and you're saying, I'm trying to cover it up and I'm, I'm about to lose it. I don't know what to do. Well, you know what I have to do? I got to take it to the Lord in prayer. I'm just going to trust you, God. I'm going to understand that there are great benefits, Lord God, by going through this, but I want to understand that I am an overcomer. You start reading a word about every scripture about overcoming. He that has begun that good work in you, he is able to complete it. God started a great work. It doesn't matter all your financial situations of the past, what family you were born into, how broke you are, what your car looks looks like what matters is what's inside of you if you have faith if you have hope if you trust God and we are overcomers hallelujah hallelujah amen amen so with that being stated hallelujah we pray against the spirit of hopelessness because that's what the enemy tries to feel, make you feel. There's some of us, you don't feel that hopeless with sickness. There's some of us, you don't feel that hopeless with family problems or marriage problems. But it's something about that money that just makes you feel like, you know what, maybe I'm not anybody. Maybe God doesn't have a plan. That's a lie. You got to apply faith. You got to mix it with faith. That spirit of hopelessness, which will lead to depression. And you say, I shouldn't even get up. I shouldn't even try to apply for a job. I shouldn't even try to do anything because it's not going to work out. I've been kicked out before. I love lost my house before I've lost my car before you gotta get back up and say if God be for us who can be against us you rise above those financial challenges and you say I got this God's like I got you and we got this hallelujah amen we pray against that spirit of fear because there's a fear that comes and a worry and the anxiety and the stress hallelujah in Jesus name all right gotta make a miracle happen 10 minutes here we go 10 tips on overcoming financial challenges. Hallelujah. Oh, the good thing is I'm not teaching or preaching about the bottom part, the part about practical side. That's just a resource for you to take home. So just let you know. All right, so here we go. 10 tips overcoming financial challenges. Number one, take everything to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. It says be anxious for nothing. But in everything, make your requests known unto the Lord with supplication, right, and prayers. Amen. We just, the enemy, when he stops us from praying, we really stress out. Because then we start talking to people about the problem, right? And that's not going to help. But just pray. Prayer still works. Prayer still changes things. An honest, sincere prayer. The Bible says the effectual and fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. Now, I know they don't teach too much about this, and people won't give you too much street credit for that, but the reality is people of faith, when you pray, when we pray, no matter what happens, just begin to pray, God, we need you. God, I need understanding. I need wisdom. We need help. We need support. Teach me how to control my finances. Teach me how to, how to spend right, how to budget, God. Lord God, I trust you. I know that I'm doing this, but I need you. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 
verse 9, know that God's grace is sufficient. You know, when we run out and we don't have enough, Paul was going, he was dealing with some stuff, and he had some weaknesses, and he was praying for a while about something. And how many of you guys, there's some financial stuff and some dreams and some things that you want, and, and it's like, it's been going on for a while. You're praying about it, and you're just kind of waiting, and it, and it hurts, you know. It's like, ah, every time you think about it, you're like, man, it still ain't happened yet. Paul told, God told Paul, my grace is sufficient. My strength is made perfect in weakness. There's something about when we're feeling weak and we're feeling the challenges and we call upon the Lord at that time that God's like, I'm going to really show you my arm. Because we are saved not by works, but by faith, by grace, through faith, and not of works lest any man should boast, because then God gets the glory. Amen? Um, number three, keep walking by faith and not by sight. Amen? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9. We walk by faith and not by sight. So once again, in our natural world, they're like, no money, no food. No man don't work, he don't eat. And that's true, you got to work hard and all that type of stuff. But there's time when things happen and it's like, man, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to keep living by faith. I'm going to keep trusting God. What happens when the door is shut? Well, God's going to open a new door. Amen. There's got to be something inside of you that when it comes to your finances, don't throw faith out. Don't say, let me just do everything I can do. No, hold up. First put faith right there. Okay, say, well, hold up. First of all, I'm just going to have to trust God. And people think you're crazy. I don't mean stop working, but you put your faith and mix your faith with your finances. Amen? Number four, regardless of your financial challenges, there's always hope. Romans chapter 5, verse 5, talks about how the God of hope, our God is the God of hope. People feel hopeless when they have financial struggles. And people commit suicide when they have financial stress. There's a lot of hopelessness that happens when that stress and bill collectors and all these things and family members, husbands, wives, everybody's putting that pressure on you, right? Hope. Amen. There's still hope. You can still trust God. God's like, I'm going to take care of you. You're going to be all right. You're going to make it. You just got to breathe. At least you're alive. You're living. Sometimes you just got to stand. After you've done everything, just stand having hope. Amen? And, and sometimes just you having that hope and just staying in there, you look back and you say, man, I, I made it through. And that's when they sing songs like, never would have made it and all that. You're like, that hope. You can't give up hope. Life happens. There's stuff that happens where it wasn't just your fault. There's medical stuff that happens. There's things in, 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 the, in the economy that happens. and It just wipes people off. And sometimes they end out on the streets and homeless and things. And, and it's just you can't give up hope. Amen? During financial struggles. Um, number five, living righteous makes a difference and is worth something. Amen? Psalms 37, verse 25. Psalm 37, verse 25. Hallelujah. Psalm 27. Oh, 37, yes. Psalm 37, verse 25. I have been young, and now I'm old. This is David speaking. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed back for bread. Amen? He said, man, I've just, people who live for God, when you're living for God, man, you could just have this hope and this expectation that, you know what, if you just live right, don't worry, God's going to take care of you. He's going to take care of your children. you got to silence the voice of the enemy that's trying to tell you we're all going to starve, we're all going to die, we're going to be shamed. No, don't worry. Keep your head up. Keep living for God. He's going to take care of you. I'm my grandmother. You're like, man, she's just a pastor, didn't have much education, always had food in her house. Everybody else had all these jobs, all this stuff, but at some point, they all end up coming back to grandma's house. Sometimes they have to live there sometimes she have to give him a ride I mean she was just a pastor and but God just took care of her and over the years had like nine something kids and God always took care of her always had an abundance always had more than enough and that's how it is when you live for God it still means something to God if you're living right things just work out because you're a believer because God loves you oh how he loves us so you live for God you keep your head up and God will take care of you that's okay. That's not crazy. That is just the truth. And remember, number seven, hallelujah, number six, God wants us to reproduce our talents and be fruitful. So while you're waiting and you're going through stuff, don't stop working. We grind. 
In my house, we grind. There's been times when I've had five jobs, and at the same time, with the doctor degree and working for universities and driving Uber, we grind. You gotta work hard. Don't get all weak and stuff. You become a Christian. You say, "Oh no, I just go trust the Lord and pray and stop going to work." Oh God, no, you gotta hustle. You get out there and do a positive hustle, right? Not talking about stealing or something like that, but you gotta work hard and then watch God give the increase. Don't come back to the Lord. Oh God, you gave me this one little talent. I just hid it. I didn't want to mess it up. No, you go and multiply that stuff. People look at me and say, how did you do all this stuff? Because we hustle. I grew up hustling as a kid, doing a bad thing sometimes. When I got the Holy Ghost, I transitioned that stuff into what was right. You go out there, brothers, and you work. You go out there, sisters, and you work. You do stuff, and you collect it all and say, God, thank you for blessing us. And watch God give grace when it's needed and give double portions when it's needed. Number seven, the devil is a liar. Remember that. And fear is a liar. Hallelujah. Number eight, miracles still happen. You think about the loaves of bread. Five loaves of bread and two fishes. You got to think about that. God still does miracles. You keep coming to the house of God, trying to sit at the feet of Jesus, the feet of Jesus and watch God do miracles. Expect miracles to happen. Number nine, no matter what, keep paying your tithes and your offering. And I know it's hard because we're human and you feel the real pressures of life. But there's something, man. You feel so confident when you're like, okay, I know there's a lot going on in life and I don't know how things are going to work out. But at least if I pay my tithes, I'm, I'm going to be all right. I'm not going to be cursed by God. Amen. I'm going to do what's right about God. I mean, I've lost houses and cars and stuff and I was just like, pay my tithes. <laughs> I mean, I just, you got to do it. And then God's like, don't worry, because what I have for you when you're faithful, it's going to be even better than what you had at first. Man, I remember losing a house that was 300,000, only like 1,000 square feet, one bathroom, <laughs> $300,000 out of college. Ooh, I'm proud. I got to be a house. You guys remember? Some of you guys remember. It was nice. Nice backyard. It was good. Right? 300,000? Man, some stresses came. I was house broke, house poor. I was going through it. Let that house go. Years later, God blessed with a better house, better house in Brookside. The same price, about 300000 Then the enemy was like, you know what, I'm going to take that house. I'm like, you know what, I'm going to still pay my tithes. The enemy was like, oh, you know what, you're going to go into foreclosure. I'm sitting around eight months, nine months, still ain't foreclosed. I'm like, what are we going to do, babe? We better sell it. They said, you're not going to be able to sell that and make no profit. The first time we tried to sell it, it was like, you're going to get about maybe 5000 10000 You have to pay that to the people. It ain't worth it. Man, we sold that house a year later. It was an increase. <laughs> it was a top. It was a top. Like, we put it for a certain amount. They were like, it was like 65000 70000 more than what we bought it for. And while at the same time, the enemy was like, you're going to foreclose, like, next week. And it was like, well, we sold it this week. God is faithful. You do your part, and then God will just take care of you. It was like, you're going to be homeless. You have to live with a family member. That guy's like, we're like, no, we're just going to pray. We're going to trust God. We're in the will of God. I sold everything, and I'm going into this, and God's going to take care of us. I'm still working, taking care of business. And God was like, I got you. Amen? God will take care of you. Number 10, owe no man nothing but to love one another. Amen? And that's tough because sometimes it gets deep, and we're like, I need to borrow and when you do, try to pay them back as soon as possible. Be like, I love you. Hey Amen. I remember somebody I brought 10000 from, and I was like, oh, man. They, 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 they volunteered it. They said, no, ask me. Don't ask no one else. Don't try to get it from two people. We were buying a house once. Don't try to get it from nobody else. Give it get from me. I was like, wow, that's so great. I'm so grateful. Like, that's love. So uh, when they made that decision, that type of love, and they weren't a blood family member either. And I made up my mind. I said, babe, no matter what, I don't care what we go through, let's make sure we pay them back. We paid them back. I felt so free. Whew, I love you. <laughs> that 10000 is paid. I will never borrow that again. Amen. <laughs> let's um, all stand. Hallelujah. It's 830. Amen. So we have our last picture. Go to the last picture. Overcoming financial challenges. As we look at this picture right here, we see David. And the other big picture right there is representing Goliath. And sometimes there are financial situations, whether we're on the side of having not enough, and the enemy's mocking us. 
And it looks like it's a giant. And it's not just something that's built. Some financial situations and conditions in our lives, it wasn't built during our lifetime. There's some stuff that's generational stuff that you're fighting against. Different habits, spending habits. Um, there's different things in our society that is promoting capitalism. And, and they're just trying to get us to spend. And they're exploiting us. And we don't even know it. And it's giants. And the enemy's mocking. He's laughing. He's saying, you guys aren't going to overcome this. You're never going to have financial freedom. You're never going to overcome these challenges. All your life, you're going to be broke. You're going to always be praying about not having enough and needing God to bless you to pay your rent and blah, blah, blah. All those lies and the enemy's mocking. You're not going to accomplish your dreams. You're never going to have that business. The enemy's laughing and he's lying. And the whole time, God's like, you understand? I understand the pain. I feel you. But I want you to know the other side of the cross. I want you to know about that power. And if you're faithful, if you serve me, you're going to go through the pain. But on the other side, there's a resurrection. There's a faith. There's somebody in here that you're saying, I'm a giant slayer. I'm trying to set stuff up in the middle of the pressure and financial stuff where my kids don't got to worry about finances ever again. I'm trying to build stuff and do stuff and work everything that I can. But we need God's grace in the midst of all of that. Because we want to do something for the kingdom. The scripture says a good man, he'll leave an inheritance for his children's children. At first I was thinking it was all about, oh, you get that career and you make that big money and you go out there, you make that 100000 you've arrived and that's good. You got your house, you got your car, blah, blah, blah. That's not it. God was like, start over. Use all that education and that faith and everything I, I gave you to start your own business. Build your own legacy that man cannot tear down and give me the glory. I want to do stuff. You're talking about making 100000 a, a, a month? I mean, excuse me, 100000 a year? Why don't you make 100000 a month? And why don't you help other people have jobs and feed them and, and be a Christian, a, a Christian business owner and treat people right and love people? And why don't you spread that into communities? And why don't you help the church? Why don't you be the one to pay the church off? Why don't you go after big dreams? I know there's a song called Caleb talking about dream small. I don't agree with it. Dream big. Go and knock out some giants. Somebody today, as you make your way down, God's calling you. He's saying, you come to me with a sword and a shield. David said, I come in the name of the living God. I see the bills. I see the debt. I see all that stuff. But I'm not afraid. I know I'm not enough to handle these problems. I'm not enough to overcome by myself. But by his grace. Hallelujah. By his word. Because his name is Jesus. And I'm willing to trust him. I want to have God work through me. I'm anointed. I've been called. David, hallelujah. Before he ever, he ever did anything. Hallelujah. It wasn't about getting a Saul's um, daughter. It wasn't about getting the kingdom. It wasn't about getting money or position or recognition. All David wanted the enemy to know is that I'm anointed and I have a walk with God and I'm living by faith. And if this is a financial challenge that's standing in your way, trying to stop you from giving God everything, trying to put your faith down, you stand before that giant and you say, in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, I will defeat you today. I will cut off that fear. I will cut off the doubt. I will cut off the hopelessness. I will trust in the Lord. Oh, Lord God, we thank you today. And Lord God, we bless your holy name. I know today somebody's being delivered in their mind. Oh, Lord God, you are my God. You are my rock. You are my strength. You are my provider. I will not trust in chariots or in horses. I thank you for my abilities. I thank you for my talents. I thank you for my education. I thank you for my ability to work. But at the end of the day, I trust you. I trust my God. He shall supply my every need. I will not let nothing mock me or mock my generation. We can do great things for God. I want to be about my father's business. 
I want to build churches. I want to build orphanages. I want to help provide for, for right here in Stockton. Oh, our pastor said he wants a man's home. Hallelujah. Use me. Use my talents. Use young people in this place. Use older people in this place. Oh, we're wanting to do so much in this city. Father, release us. Release us, Lord God, into greater things. Help us to make the right habits. Help us to create budgets. Help us, Lord God, to be disciplined in our spending. Help us not, Lord God, to fall into the catch of what the world is saying. Spend more. Buy more. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you for the victory. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Oh, that we are overcomers through him that loved us. And Lord God, we thank you for the patience. We thank you for the character that is built inside of us. We just want to be about our Father's business. You said lay aside every weight and every sin that does so easily beset you and run this race with patience looking to Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him he endured the cross hallelujah lift your hands right now hallelujah say I declare I declare in the name of Jesus Christ the victory over financial struggles I declare the victory over financial hardships through faith by grace hallelujah in the name of jesus oh we pray and we thank you go ahead and praise him hallelujah god loves you god loves you despite how many bills you have god loves you despite how much debt you have god loves you jesus he loves you he's gonna help you to overcome the debt he's gonna help you to overcome the bills just keep your head up keep marching keep working hard keep expecting miracles keep living holy keep walking by faith and god will see you through there is no temptation taking you but that which is common to man but god is faithful he will not allow you to be tempted above what you're able but he will with that temptation make a way of escape that you might be able to bear it so lord god we thank you for challenges we thank you for adversity we thank you for pain because now we understand lord god oh what it feels like to be overcomers to have the victory and then to whisper that into the people that we know you take this message and when somebody's talking at work about all their troubles and they're saying i'm just gonna go get something to drink i can't handle it i'm just gonna go and give up i'm gonna leave my wife leave my kids no you gotta minister and say there's a god and he's faithful he'll help you with your finances take this message back into the community with your families don't give up in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah Oh, we love you, Father. Oh, we thank you, Lord God. Somebody's getting delivered tonight, Lord, from that fear. That fear, hallelujah, of not having enough. That fear of things will never get better. That fear that I will never prosper. God says he wants to make you the head and not the tail. He wants to bless you in the city and in the field. He, hallelujah, that promise is faithful, hallelujah. Oh, cast down every evil imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of the word of God. You keep living for God, and God will bless you. God will bless you. He is blessing you. Oh, we love you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. Go ahead and praise the Lord. You're welcome to continue to pray if you like. You are dismissed. God bless you. Love you.